Hey guys, what's up? It's the Crazy Stuff back with another video. So, Scratch is a super cool engine and everything, but it doesn't really support many platforms. Um, you can't export to Steam or PC. You can't um, uh, make mobile games. You can't make money off your games. It's quite limiting. And you have to hard code everything. There's nothing to take care of physics or anything. You're, there's no camera system. There's no multiplayer. Or the multiplayer that they do have isn't the best. It's laggy limited to very few people and just not very ideal but again let's say most people don't really want to learn how to code as that takes time can be hard for some people and again the biggest thing it takes time and some people just want to be able to make mobile games for fun coding just doesn't seem fun to them well that's what gdevelop comes out and fixes gdevelop is a free game engine that requires no code and is really great and I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this on a Scratch channel, but it's much better than Scratch. And again, you don't have to write a single line of code. And this is actually GDevelop right here. It's quite simple, not tons of panels. There is some panels, but I'm gonna explain all of them right now. So first off first, we have the objects panel. In GDevelop, everything is an object and you create objects, the example being your player, coins, score counter, and other things like that. Then we have the properties tab, which is used to modify game objects that we have placed in our scene. This is the scene. A scene basically stores multiple game objects. In this example, let's say a level or main menu. This is the layers tab where we can create, well, layers. And then over here, um, another thing I should note is we have global objects and scene objects. How do we actually start coding? Well, first things first, we need something to code. So let's actually create a new object for our player. So I'm gonna create a new object by hitting add a new object. And then you see, it'll pull up a bunch of things. So first we have to choose what kind of object. First, you have our general, which contains sprite, tiled sprites, panel sprites, 3D box, and 3D models. As again, this engine actually does support 3D. We have a multi-touch joystick, text, text, text. These all do different things, but I'm not gonna get into that. A bunch of stuff for UI, lights, because again, this does have 2D lighting, particles, 3D particles, tile map, tile map collision, shape, and spine. There's quite a bit here and allows you to instantly do much more than you can in Scratch. Um, but again, this is a 2D game, so I'm going to do Sprite. It's going to ask for an object name. This is going to be called our player. And as you see, it's going to ask us to create a new animation. I'm going to come down here and do add an animation. And you can see we now have animation zero. I'm going to choose a name, which for this is going to be default. I then create with a pistol, and we shall create a new Sprite. I'm just going to do a simple smiley face and go like this. And yes, this is pretty scuffed, but you know, it's, it's beautiful at the same time. Now if I apply this, and I can now have my object right here. Now there's one thing you might notice, this currently is inside of scene objects, which means that this player object is only to this scene. Now we're going to want to make more scenes with the player in it, so we don't really want that. So let's actually drag our player into our objects. So now that it's a global object, we can now access our player object from any scene, no matter what. So I can now go to level 2, and we can still access our player. Now to actually put him in our scene here, I'm going to actually grab him and drag him in, like so. And now we have a created a new instance of our player. I can now click him and actually see up here, and it's the player, and I can actually modify his X position, so I can set it to like 200, 400, 500. I can change his Z value, which is for 3D. I can change his width, height, rotation, animation, and stuff like that. I can actually create multiple instances of our player, but we don't really want that, so. So if I hit preview here and run it, as you'll see, nothing happens. I press my keys, we're not doing anything. And that's because we need to actually have a behavior to control our player. Now, we could code in our movement ourselves. That's totally possible in GDevelop. You can check key inputs, collisions, stuff like that, but we don't really want to do that. That's a waste of time. We just want to grab a overhead movement player controller. So how do we do that? Double click your player and it pulls up this menu again where we were originally and you can edit our properties of our sprite. But we want to add a new behavior. So how do we do that? Come over here to behaviors, click it, and we add a new behavior. And as you can see, there is quite a few behaviors and quite a few of these are actually community made. But we're not going to go into any of these ones. All we want is the default GDevelop ones. And the one we're looking for is top down movement. So just click that and voila. And as you can see, we have all these attributes for our top-down movement, which just allows us again to do top-down movement. Now I'm gonna modify these values. Um, so example, our acceleration, I wanna set that to 500. Our max speed, 500. And I'll actually set our DO acceleration the same as our acceleration. Um, I don't want my players to rotate, so I'll turn rotation off. And there's some other properties here. 
uh, but I'm not going to modify those because don't really need any of that. So now if I apply it and hit preview again, I can now press my arrow keys. As you can see, we can now move our character. Now it slides around a lot and that's because of our deacceleration and acceleration. So I can then crank these bad boys if we want to go more. So I'll set this to 1000 and 1000. But again, this is completely up to you. And our player is definitely a lot easier to control. So now that we have our player in, how will we actually start coding? So for this example, let's create a coin. I want to make it so a coin, every time we touch the coin, we will have a counter appear that increases. This is actually super easy, so let's just jump right into it. So first things first, we need to add a new object right here. It's going to be of type sprite again. I'm going to name it coin, and I'm going to create with pistol once again. And it's just going to be a simple coin, so I'm just going to go like this and create a very janky Mario style coin. Now that we have our coin here, we can go in and we can drag it our coin around. And now if I run the game, you'll see that if I touch it, absolutely nothing happens. So how do we fix this? Well, we need to first up code. When our player touches this, we need to destroy the coin and increase a value. But let's take care of the destroying the coins first. So come to this untitled scene events tab. And as you see, we can now add and create new events. Events is what obviously everything or all the code in GDevelop is. Event contains a condition and an action to basically control your whole game. This basically puts coding down into the very default form of what core coding actually is, which is super cool. So let's actually create a new event. So I'm gonna hit add new event. As you can see, we now have add condition and add an action. So what condition do we actually want? We want to check if our player is touching a coin. So I'm gonna hit add condition, and we can now choose between other conditions, which have a lot and can do all kinds of stuff, leaderboards, player to player networking, ads for mobile games and stuff. Um, but we currently want to check a condition for our player. So I'm going to click player and I'm going to scroll down and as you see There's a collision right here uh, Condition, so I'm going to click the collision and you can see it pops over here We can read about it test the collision between two objects using their collision mask And we can now choose what object now I want to check coin. So I'm going to click coin. Now you can't invert this condition so example, I want to make it so if we're not touching the coin to do something, I can invert it and this will now run this condition if we're not colliding. But I do want to check for colliding, so I'll leave that not converted. And as you can see, we can now see up here in the condition, it says if player is in collision with coin, and we can now add an action. So the action we want to do is we want to go coin, and we want to delete this object. So basically, if player is in collision with the coin, we want to delete the coin. So now if I run this, see if I touch the coin, it deletes itself. Okay, but we currently cannot see how many coins we currently have. How do we do that? Again, come to your player, modify him, and go to the variables tab. We'll create a new variable called score, and this will store how many coins we've gotten. Change the value type from string to number. There's quite a few uh, value types here, um, but again, I'm not gonna get to it. We want number, so yeah. And we want it to be zero. Then let's add a new object here of type text. And this is going to be called our player score. The initial text to display is zero and the size of this text is 35. We can now apply that and drag it up here and we now have a score counter. I'm going to actually make this a global object as well as the coin as I, our game is going to be needing coins in every scene. I'm now going to come up to the code and inside its action, we're going to actually click our player and I'm going to look for a variables section. And I see variables right here. And there's multiple types, there's change number, text, arrays, and structures, booleans, and stuff like that. But the stuff we're looking for is number. It's going to ask us for the name of the variable, which is called score. It's going to ask if we want to, how we want to modify this variable. Um, we want to add, and the value we want to add is 1. So now if I run it, you'll see if we go through, our text still doesn't show the score. So how do we actually do that? Let's add a new event with no condition. If there's no condition, it'll run all the time, which that's what we want. But I will add an action and I'm going to go player score and I'm guessing that this text action or this text thing right here is what we're looking for as we are dealing with text and it says change the text so that's exactly what I want and I want to add to this text or set it equal to and I'm looking for our players and I can type player as you can see it'll pull up my player right here and by typing dot I can access values from our player and I can just type score being that we have a variable called score. I can hit OK and bam. Now if I run our game, I should be able to touch the coins and we'll see the score up here change values. Like so. 
And that's it. That's all the coding is inside of GDevop. That was super easy. It took hardly anything to do. So we check if our player is in collision with the coin. If so, we're going to delete the coin and change our variable by one. Every single frame, though, we want to set the text of our player score equal to our player's score variable, which we access by doing the player dot score. Super simple and required no coding at all. Now there's tons of other stuff such as extensions and scenes and custom extensions. But again, you can just make it by just using this stuff right here to make full games. And again, this isn't a full tutorial, just to show you guys this game engine. I truly believe that this game engine is much better than Scratch. If you want to finally upgrade off of Scratch and start making full games, Scratch is definitely the way to go. Anyways, that's all for the video. If you guys want to support me, please consider subscribing. Or at the least, liking this video will help me out a ton. If you guys have any questions or want to see more videos around GDevelop, maybe networking or multiplayer videos or just making a platformer game, all the polish and stuff like that, just to release it. Let me know down in the comments down below. And again, I'll try to read all of them. Anyways, that's all from the Crazy Dev. I'll see you guys next time.